Loops are a way that computer programs repeat code blocks until a condition is met. In this video, I'm going to introduce the while loop and its counterpart, the do while loop, as well as two C sharp keywords, break and continue, that can be used inside loop code blocks to alter the flow of the code path. So the while statement specifies a block of code that should be repeated so long as a condition is true. In general, while loops are used for things that aren't easily counted. For example, how long should a speaker play a song? Well, until the song is finished, and that will be different depending on which song you're playing. Or, how many times should we play this tic-tac-toe game? Well, until the user decides to quit. When we write the program, we don't know if they're going to want to play it one time, three times, ten times. We have no idea. So much like the if statement, the while keyword contains a boolean or expression. The difference is while the if statement only checks the condition once, the while loop checks it before the code block is run, but will check it again after each time the code block is finished. The code block will be repeated so long as the boolean expression remains true. So as an example, let's write some sample code, pseudocode, imagining that we're washing a dish. So how many times do we need to wash a dish? Now, most of us have experienced having some food that's stuck on the plate or difficult to clean off. And so it requires multiple passes of being washed and rinsed. So in the code, we would say, while the dish is dirty, wash the dish. So the way this loop would work is first it would check the expression dish dot is dirty and we would assume that would return a boolean because if you see something that says is it will usually be returning true or false and if that dish is dirty if it's true then we will run the code block which means that the dish gets washed and then it's going to go back up when it hits the bottom of the curly braces at the loop and it's going to say is the dish still dirty? And it's going to check. And if it's true, it's going to repeat the code block. And it's going to wash the dish until the dish is dirty returns false. And when that returns false, then the loop will stop. It will not wash the dish and it will skip the execution to after the while loop. And it will continue the program from there. Now, the interesting thing about a while loop is that if that initial condition is false, if it starts as false, so if we give it a dish that is already clean, it will skip the code block and continue a program. So there is no guarantee with a while loop that the code block will be executed. It can be entirely skipped. So the obvious question is, well, what if I have a code block that I want to run at least one time no matter what? And this is what the do while loop is for. This is just a while loop flipped on its head. So in the while loop, the condition comes first. But in the do while loop, the condition comes after the code block. And what this means is that the code block is going to run first. And it will always run at least one time and then it's going to check the condition. So a good example of this is when it's used to prompt users for information. If I want to get the age of a user, I need to ask them at least one time. And if they enter something invalid like ABCD, then I could check the input in the condition and ask them to try again. Now notice that since the do while loop does not end with a code block, it ends with parentheses. So we do have a semicolon at the end, unlike the while loop. Otherwise, the loop behaves the same as the while loop. It is going to keep running that code block and checking the expression until it becomes false. And then it will move on to the rest of the program. Now let's look at an example of a while loop. In this loop, we are going to take a variable x, which we initialize to a value of one and we're going to print it and add one to it so long as the number is less than five. 
So we start with that initialized variable and it's gonna say the value of X is one. Is X less than five? Yes, that is true. So then it's going to drop into the code block and it's going to print it out to the console and then it's going to add one to the value of X and reassign it. Remember that X plus plus is the same as X equals X plus one. So X is now two and it hits the bottom of the loop and it jumps back up to the top. Is two less than five? Yes. So it's going to drop back into the loop. And again, it's going to print and we're going to output it and we're gonna add one again. So now X is three and it's going to check in again. Is three less than five? Yes, so it's going to print it again. It's going to increment it again. It's going to check it again. Four is still less than five, we're still printing. And then eventually what's going to happen is it's going to hit five. Is five less than five? No, that is false. And then it's going to drop out of the loop. So five will not be printed. It's going to skip the code block and it's going to move on. Now let's introduce a new keyword, continue. Sometimes in a loop, we might be in the code block and we might want to skip the rest of the block and go immediately back to evaluating the condition, skipping the rest of the statements. Now notice our if statement here. It reads that if the value of X mod two is zero, that means if X is an even number, then we want to continue, which means skip the rest of the code block of which the only statement left in the code block is a console.write line. So it's going to skip printing numbers that are even. So when we start this loop, it starts as zero and then it adds one. So X becomes one. And since one is not even, it's going to hit the console.write line and it will jump back up to the top. Is one less than or equal to five? Yes, it is. It drops into the code block and it's going to make X two. And it's going to say, hey, two is equal to zero, continue. And it's going to skip the rest of the block and jump back up to the while condition. So as long as the value continues to be odd, it will continue printing. So when it becomes three, it will print. But when it's four, it's going to skip. And when it's five, it's going to print. So every time the continue keyword is hit, it's going to skip to the condition. And this is also true in the do while loop. When you have a do while loop, the continue keyword will jump to the bottom where the condition is. So unlike the continue keyword, which continues execution at the condition, the break keyword cancels the loop immediately, regardless of whether the condition is false. In this code, we have similar logic to where we're starting at zero and we're adding one. But this time our check is that if the num mod three is zero. In other words, if the number is a factor of three, we're going to break. Now break again terminates the loop entirely, no matter what the condition says and it moves the execution to the next statement after the loop. So in this case, we're going to go into the loop and we're gonna add one to X, which is gonna make it one and it's going to be printed. Now one is less than or equal to 10. So we're going to again go into the loop and we're going to add one and we're going to print it. But when the value becomes three, it's going to hit the break statement and it's going to exit the loop immediately no more values will be printed. Now the break keyword is often used in situations where you're searching for something or waiting for something specific to happen, like a valid value. And once you've found it or have what you're looking for, continuing the loop is not necessary. So you can save processing and make your code more efficient by stopping the loop. The continue keyword is more often used when you want to skip steps in a certain condition but you still want to finish looping. Break is often used in validating user input. And as you're going to see when I jump over into sample code, 
if I ask the user for a specific value, say a positive integer, we can use a while loop with a break statement to keep asking the user until they give us valid input. And then we can use break to stop asking. So let's go ahead and show you a common example of how to use a while loop to validate user input. And when I do this, I'm going to use another one of the primitive methods called triparse. Now, previously I showed you parse, which will turn a string into a decimal or an integer or one of those primitive types because we need to have type safety. But the problem with parse is that if the user types in something invalid, it will throw an exception which will crash the program. There is another method called triparse, which is also on all of the primitive types. And it returns true or false, true if the parse is successful, and false if it is not. And the great thing about triparse is that it does not crash your program or throw exceptions when the data is bad. But it also uses something called an output parameter. So it looks a little weird to beginners. Now I'm not going to cover output parameters at this time, but I am going to show you how to use it in the context of triparse. So let's say for a moment that we would like to get a number from a user. And we're going to get input from the console. And my goal is to use a while loop to prompt the user until they give me a valid integer. Now, should I use a while or a do while? Well, I'm prompting the user. I have to prompt them at least once or they won't know what to do. So that means I want to use a do while loop. So I'm gonna say do and put my curly braces and then I'm gonna say while and this is where I would put my condition. Now, something that a lot of programmers will do in situations like this, where I want to decide when to break the loop, they'll just put true in here. And now this loop will run forever until I execute a break statement. So while true, and we'll say console.write, enter a number, just like that. And then we'll get the input. So I'll say input is equal to console.readline. And then I want to say if int.triparse. And we can see as the IntelliSense pops up that it does return a Boolean. And it looks, it takes in a string and then outputs a result. So the string input is going to be my input variable. And then I'm going to say out number. And then I'm going to put my curly braces. So what's going to happen here is the triparse method is going to run. It's going to receive the string input that came from the console. And if it is successful, the number variable will have the integer value in it. If it fails, the number variable will not have data in it and we can't use it. So putting this in an if statement, if true, if it's successful, then we're going to break. And if it's not successful, then we can print something like that was not a number. And then we can do something like console.write line, press any key to continue dot, dot, dot. And I will show you there's another one called console.readkey, which will just read the next key. And I often use this method for the press any key to continue scenario, as we can see here. Now, if it breaks, it's going to come outside the loop. And here we will print the value that they inputted. So I'll say console.writeline, you entered number. just like that. And now when we run this, unlike before, we will be able to enter bad data without the program crashing. So if I type banana, that is not a number, 
It just says, hey, that wasn't a number. That wasn't a number. Decimals are not integers. It will not accept that. So take note of that. And then if I put in a whole number like 10, it's happy. It leaves the loop, it prints it, and the program ends. So this is a very common way to handle user input. And we can even take this a step farther. What if I wanted to change this to enter a positive integer? We'll update our language here. Now here, the first check is whether or not it's an integer at all. And then within this, I can put another if statement. If it is an integer, then if the number is greater than zero, we're happy. But if not, I can put a more descriptive message. That was not a positive integer, just like that. So now when we run the program, we get a little bit more validation. And if I put minus 10, it's gonna say that was not a positive integer. If I say zero, that was not a positive integer. And if I say banana, it was not a positive integer. So the only thing that will let me out of this loop is giving it a positive integer, like five. And there we go, you entered five. Everything's good and it's happy. So that's how we can quickly use a while loop, like I said, in cases where you don't know how many times you need to loop. How many times is the user going to make a mistake? We don't know, hopefully it's zero, but ultimately we don't know. So the while loop is really good for that situation. I also got to show you how to use the true keyword as the condition so that we can manually stop the loop with a break statement whenever we want. And in the slide demo that I did before, you got to see some examples where the while condition was an expression, you know, X is less than five or things like that. And you're gonna see this in use a lot as you start programming real applications.